There's nothing else that you can do. There's nothing else you can't do. As we explained with those, that was the sermon last Sunday night as those five came forward. <clears throat> Just as, as when, when Peter baptized, you know, when, when you get baptized and, and you get you ask Jesus into your heart, you are part of the church, the 37 million churches across this, this world, you are a member of each and every one. But see, that requires humility on the church's part. To receive because a lot of times the church body is not so willing to receive someone they walk in they say oh are you are you, are you a member here well of course i am <laughs> i'm a member of god's church i don't know if that's what this is but that's what i thought <laughs> <laughs> we were up in cholo thursday and friday and I don't know. I, I've always been told it was a house that belongs to George Strait up there in, in Pine Top. And it's, it's very easy. It could be George Strait's house. I was always told when I lived there that it was, and it's still there. And it still looks the same. So I drove up, showed, showed it to Dessa. And, and it's a big place out in the woods. But when you turn out of Pine Top <clears throat> on the Pentagon Road, that used to be nothing out there. I mean, just nothing. Then you got down, you went around the corner, and George Strait's house was about the first one you came to. Now, from that corner, and it's less than two miles back there. From that corner where you turn back to his house, there's three new churches. Yes. And you can throw a rock from one to the next. <laughs> and I was like, wow, that's crazy. Why didn't they just build one big one? There's a Lutheran church, there's a Presbyterian church. And I don't remember what the other one was. And I thought, wow, three churches in two miles. Why didn't they just build one big church? Why didn't they just build one big building for everybody? <coughs> they just put y'all come on the front or something crazy <laughs> like that. <laughs> this is, well, there's another cowboy church out here. <clears throat> See, we, 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 we've got to, as a church, we've got to come back to being who Jesus called us to be. We've got to come back to being home. I had a very, 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 it really, really touched my spirit, really touched my heart, and it really, really touched me this last week. A man that has visited here one time. <coughs> I, was, I was just, I was so, I was so, uh, for lack of a better way to think of what to say right now, so proud of this church, this congregation. This man visited this church one time. And he said, you know what, Pastor? He said, you don't have to stand at the door and welcome anybody to your church. The minute you walk through that door, you feel it. And that's because of you. Amen. That's because you come with the Spirit of God when you come to church. And when they walk through that door, they recognize it. He was here. We were doing baptism. And he said, I was out there watching him. He said, I know that I knew that I needed to be next. He said, I'm going to do that. That's like praise the Lord. That, that we allow the Spirit of God to just be here. And we invite Him in and we love Him here. And we love each other here. And that, that humbleness, that humility of just being able to put your arms around somebody's neck and say, Good morning, good to see you. We love you here. You don't even have to do any of that. They recognize it the minute they walk in the door. That's the presence of the living God. That's Jesus. That's who He calls us to be. Amen. That humble group of people that, that just welcomes anybody that comes. That humility. Something that that we something that we are somewhat intimidated by, but when we receive it and when we, when we act in it, it blesses our soul. That's what Jesus tells us. He says, if, if you'll be humble and you'll be you'll be have a little humility in your life, that will bless you. You'll receive a blessing from being the humble. That's what Jesus demonstrated when he was here. Come and take my yoke upon you and learn of me and, and be meek and be lowly, and he'll bring peace and rest to your soul. In his own words, he tells us that. Go to Matthew 20, 20 and 21. Here we go again. We see how, how quickly we, we set ourselves up. We, how quickly we take ourselves and we, we or someone else and we put it up in front, of, in front of everybody else. Then came to him the mother of Zebedee's children with her sons, worshiping him and desiring a certain thing. And he said under here, under her, What wilt thou? What, do you, what is it that you're here for? She saith unto him, 
Grant that these my two sons may sit the one only on the right, the one on the right and the other on the left in thy kingdom. <coughs> How quickly we, 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 we look for something more than what Jesus wants us to be looking to. He wants us to be looking to him, but not looking to him to exalt us. <coughs> looking to him to teach us to be the way he wants. David says in the Psalms, Lord, teach me thy ways. Teach me to be like you. Teach me, show me how I learned to have that humility, to be humble, to be able to, to love old people and, 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 and lift other people up and not put myself above them. Not, not put myself to where I'm better than you. Not put myself in a place to where I'd be taking your place. See, that's what we do when we lift ourselves above, the, above other people. We put ourselves in God's place over somebody. In Matthew 20, verse 27. And he says, And whosoever will be chief among you, let him be your servant. Whoever's the greatest among you, let him be your servant. Let him, again, humility. Come back down and say, You know what? As Paul said, Of the sinners, I'm the chiefest. But I'm a prisoner for Jesus Christ. I put myself in a place of being humble, being, uh, being having humility. We can take our, humble ourselves and take no place before God. And assuming who someone else might, might be or the way that they live their life would be right or wrong or indifferent is not important. It's not our place. Our place is to look at all the people of the world in the same way that Jesus did. You know, I related this in a, in a, in a reading that I, was, that I did. They, they related... Um, the Spirit of God is, is the water. Water always fills the lowest place first. Water is a very powerful thing. We see the floods and what water can do and the damage that water can do in many, many places, especially this time of year. But yet water always goes to the lowest place. And that's immediately where it goes, to the lowest spot, and it fills that first before it expands. And the Spirit of God is the same way. It goes to the low, the meek, the humble. The Spirit of God fills that place first. If we're in that place, if we have a place of humility in our life and, and we're, we're looking to minister for God and to be who He called us to be in service to Him and to be His servant, He fills that spot with His Spirit. And we receive the power, we receive the ability, and we receive the, the, the ability to do things we didn't know we could do. This morning, I walked in and Wayne humorously turns to me and says, well, we go to Harvest Cowboy Church, and uh, he went on for a long spell. I said, well, you said that all in one breath. <laughs> God will give you the words to speak. God will take over. God will do what he does, do what he does it through us when we have humility in our life. When we realize that I am the least. I am the servant. I will do what God would call me to do. And so as I do that, then he delivers on his promise. And we receive a blessing from being humble. We receive a blessing from allowing the life that we live be a life that reflects Jesus Christ. <clears throat> you know, our, our purpose and our prayer can be one of, of like David did. Lord, teach me thy ways. I, I, I don't get it as a human being. I, my, I just really have a hard time having, eating that humble pie and eating that crow and, and getting my food out of my mouth. I have a hard time with that. But teach me your ways, Lord. Teach me to not go there. Teach me a little humility. Let's go to Luke chapter 14. Luke 14, verse 11. For whosoever exalteth himself shall be abased. And he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. Humility and humbleness apart. God exalts us, exalt us to a place that we don't know exists. In peace and in comfort and in fulfillment of our soul. God uses our own abilities that we give to him to bless us. So remember that as we go and as we do things. And this is, like I said, I'm preaching to the preacher 
we're not, when we go out and out and, and we deal with people on a daily basis. We deal with people in all kinds of ways and God puts us in places that, that he's put me in a place where I have to deal with a lot of people and, and he's teaching me through that that humility and humbleness is going to work a lot better than forcefulness and determination. Remember, he put you in a place to be a minister, not to be anything else. He puts you, he puts you in a place and puts you around people to minister for him, not for yourself. Not to show that you're the greatest, but that he is. See, a lot of times we, we think we need to, and I've been of the opinion that, that the Lord put me in the school board because he knew who I was and he knew how I'd react and that's exactly right and he's teaching me, you need to knock it off. <laughs> <coughs> you need to remember that I put you here for my purpose. I didn't put you here for your purpose. And so that's that humility, that's that humbleness coming back, coming, coming into vision and coming into seeing that God had a perfect plan and if I remember to stick, keep my head in the yoke and walk with him, I'll get a blessing from the Spirit. If I step out on my own and run headlong like I usually do, I'm going to trip and I'm going to fall. He's going to come along, he's going to pick me up and stick my head back in the old and say, okay, try again. So remember that as you go through day to day that, that when we exalt ourselves, we put ourselves in God's place. And I don't want to be in God's place. I want to be in God's presence. <coughs> By his mighty power and his great love, he will perfect the purpose that he has for your life. If we remember to be humble and to allow him to work his ideas and his plans in our life and not our own. That's called eating a little crow. I thought I knew all this and come to find out I'm not so smart. Come to find out I don't have any idea what his plan is. Come to find out I'm a whole lot better off if I just keep my keep tuned into him and keep my feet in his footsteps. Because he'll lead me in a path of peace and of comfort and of joy that, that the world can't deliver, that the world can't bring, that the world can't. Okay, we've got a couple of songs we're going to close with. <clears throat> we invite you to hang around for the 11 o'clock service, 945 and skip 11 o'clock service and come back again this evening at 6. We are planning on the 14th. <coughs> 8th of September, the Saturday of our Feast of Tabernacles, we're planning a cookout, potluck, not sure what it is yet. So it's going to be an eating meeting, is what it's going to be. That's probably the way I'll put it in the schedule. Saturday will be an eating meeting, probably about 2 o'clock in the afternoon, don't you think? Sounds good to you? Okay. So that, that's what we're planning to be praying about it. Somebody told me this last week that. They like going to church potlucks because everybody makes their best dish for church potlucks. So be praying about it. We'll be looking forward to it. It's going to be an afternoon, Saturday afternoon deal. So uh, uh, just for everybody to have an opportunity to think about it. And, and remember what the things you really like to make the most. Tommy has a question. Tommy. Question. Pastor, have Millie and Ronnie been welcome home yet? Yeah, we did earlier. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, we started a song and I said, the church man, have Ronnie and Millie back. We can do that again. <laughs> Thank you, Ronnie and Millie. Thank you. We can do that in heaven and We're looking forward to another good winter. I know Greg and Cindy are planning on coming the first November, but right now all they know that they're going to be here is two weeks. They've got a lot of things going on. So just be in prayer that we have a... I'm looking forward to a great winter and a great time together in the Lord. Oh, another thing, too, I want to remind everybody before we get out of here, we're moving Daryl tomorrow. Just moving his garage. We've got a truck with a lift gate. But if you'd like to come and help, we'll be moving Daryl tomorrow morning about 730. If you want to come and help, get with Destin. She'll tell you how to get there. Okay? All right. Here we go.